Hey, good afternoon. This is Jared Friedman from Redwood Financial Planning, um, here to talk about how to set up your 401k plan. This video was inspired by a new client that we just took on, that uh, we discovered that after being involved in their company's retirement plan for over two years, they never actually invested their contributions. All of their contributions and all of the company contributions have been sitting in cash for the last two years, and uh, the client was very concerned that they weren't uh, maximizing those dollars because they hadn't seen any gains, and it turns out that they never actually selected their investments and put their money to work, so we had to help them uh, reallocate their 401k. So that gave us the idea to shoot a video to kind of give everyone out there some tips and some help regarding setting up their 401k plans. So please watch, please enjoy, and uh, hopefully you can learn something and make sure that your 401k plan or any other type of retirement plan at work is working best for you. All right. So the first thing we want you to understand is that the company retirement plan should not be an intimidating thing that uh, you choose to overlook or not get involved in because you don't understand investments or you're worried that you're going to lose money in it. The bottom line is we all have to save for retirement and the company sponsored retirement plan or 401k plan is probably the best vehicle or the first vehicle you should start to use to build towards your uh, financial independence. So the first thing you should do when you become eligible to, to, to participate in your company plan is to read through the booklet. It could be online, it could be given to you in paper, but the first thing you should do is read through the booklet. The biggest thing you want to find out is if the company will make any contributions on your behalf to the plan. And if so, we want to find out very quickly what we have to do or what you have to do to get the most free money from the company. So it could be they might match your salary. If you put away a certain percentage, they might put away a certain percentage. So we want to find out well, what is the most amount of money you have to put away to get the most or the largest contribution from the company. Some companies give contributions either at the end of the year in the form of a profit sharing contribution or maybe just a discretionary give at the end of the year as well. So by reading through the booklet, you will learn exactly what you have to do to get the most free money from the company. In the booklet, you'll also learn what is the most amount of money you can contribute to the 401k plan. The IRS has their own guidelines, but some things might be going on in your company that might limit how much money you can contribute instead of the IRS guideline. We also want to know how long you have to participate to, uh, to become fully vested Fully vested means how much money the company put in for you is actually yours to keep if you were to leave the company. Inside the booklet, you'll also learn about the different investment options you have and uh, all the other rules regarding the plan. So it's very important that you read through the booklet. Don't, uh, don't be intimidated by it. You can get through it and make sure you learn the important things regarding your program. So once we understand how much we can contribute and all the different rules of the plan, the best thing we should do is start contributing. The best advice that I can give is to get involved in your company's retirement plan as early as possible, as soon as you are eligible, for two main reasons. Number one, you get used to saving. The money comes right out of your paycheck so you can begin to uh, what's called adjust your lifestyle to the change in your take-home pay. And the earlier you start, the earlier you can make those adjustments if you need to down the road. Also, we want to make sure you get the most amount of free money from the company as early as possible. Missing out on company contributions is not something that you can catch up to or catch up on down the line. So the earlier you start, the earlier you can start getting company contributions, and the earlier you can start participating or growing your wealth for your financial independence. At minimum, you should start contributing to the plan at the point where you get the most free money from your employer. If you have to contribute 5% to get the highest match, start at 5%. If you have to start at 3% or if you have to contribute 3%, start at 3%. Whatever you have to do to get the highest company contribution, that is where you should begin. A lot of people ask us, well, how much should I contribute? Always and forever, it is always at the point where you have to put X dollars in to get the most free money from the company. That's usually not gonna be enough for your retirement, so we recommend that at least every six months you start increasing that contribution by 1% until you max out the plan. Now after you've decided how much you're gonna contribute, the next thing you have to do is figure out how your dollars are gonna be invested. 
So in most plans or most booklets, they usually have something called a risk tolerance questionnaire. These are basically glorified personality quizzes, but they're designed to get you thinking about your money, thinking about losses in the stock market, and how you would react if your uh, account balance went down over time. And once you take that questionnaire, it usually will spit out some form of asset allocation model, whether it's conservative all the way up to aggressive, that will tell you what percentage of your contribution should go in the various asset classes. Large cap, mid cap, small cap, international, real estate, it doesn't matter. Your risk tolerance will determine what kind of model you should be invested in and how your contribution should be invested. Now understand something. All of the models, all of the booklets, <coughs> excuse me, none of them will say this is your expected rate of return. Okay? None of these models are designed to produce a 5% rate of return or a 10% rate of return. What they're designed to do is to help you build a portfolio that will move in a way you can expect meaning the more aggressive, the more volatile, the more conservative, the least, uh, the least volatile. Because what we're trying to do here is build a portfolio that, like I said, can move in a way you that would expect so you don't make bad decisions if the market makes a move south or up or left, right or center because you weren't expecting it. So your asset allocation model will produce a portfolio that will move a certain way and hopefully it's a way you can expect so you don't take an action that will necessarily unnecessarily hurt your uh, your investing or your investments or your financial future. So once you've taken the questionnaire and produced your models and figure out how you should be invested for your 401k plan, then you have to start looking at all the funds. All of the funds that are available in the plan, most plans have anywhere between 15 to 18 mutual funds that you can select to uh, to fill out your model. In addition to those individual mutual funds, a lot of plans now have what's called target date funds that are basically mutual funds that are tied to your expected retirement date. And in those funds, they will automatically scale back the risk as you get closer to retirement. So you take a look at all the different funds, you take a look at the returns, you take a look at the different fees regarding each fund, you take a look at uh, what asset classes are covered to make sure you can cover all the asset classes in your model, and then you start selecting percentages to, uh, to fill up each individual asset class. Now most booklets usually have a one pager on each fund or you can always go online to a website like Morningstar.com or Yahoo Finance to get more information about uh, each mutual fund to look at the holdings, to look at the longer term track record. So you can pick the best funds for each asset class. If you have uh, money already in the plan, it's important that you build a portfolio for your new money, meaning money coming out of your paycheck to look like the correct asset allocation model and also change the money that's already in the plan. All right, so you kind of want all your money to be invested the same way if your risk tolerance and your time horizon is, uh, is of course the same for both sides. Now if you have a large balance already in your 401k plan and you're worried about market declines, then you can always get defensive with that large balance and keep that more conservative and only change new money into uh, the appropriate asset allocation model. So most 401k plans allow you to do both, right? They allow you to invest old money, money already in the plan one way, and new money or new contributions another way. For most people, it, it should be or it can be the same, but like I said, if some people want to get defensive with their large balance, they can, and then invest uh, their new dollars into their appropriate asset, asset allocation model. Because one thing you have to understand, right? The market goes up and down. But you, Mr. Participant or Mrs. Participant in a company retirement plan, are buying into the market every two weeks or every week. So I, know, so I know you want to believe or you want to hope that the market only goes up, but if you're actually a net buyer, you might want to be rooting for the market to go up or down or be a little more volatile than maybe somebody else. As a, as a net buyer, you want to buy more for less, and that only happens if the market actually goes down. So don't actually be afraid or worried if the market goes down because like I said, you're buying in every week or every two weeks with your paychecks. Any questions, right? So that's basically the crux of how to get started, what to do, and where you're going. Now some of the bad things we've seen over the years with people who are participating in retirement plans is are only investing in multiple mutual funds but all the same asset classes. So maybe you have a Fidelity large cap fund, an American funds large cap fund, a Putnam large cap fund, and then you think you're diversified because you're in multiple fund families, 
but it turns out you're in the same asset class, so they probably all own Walmart stock or Apple stock or Coca-Cola or Microsoft. So even the fund families are different, the underlying holdings are probably the same. Some people I've seen, like my, my new client, is they've stayed in cash this whole time. They never took the time to go through the book to submit the forms or select their investments, so their contributions and the company contributions have went into cash, and they've never seen any growth on their money. But the worst thing we've seen, the worst thing we've seen is people who set up their 401k plans, never look at it again, never adjust their contribution, and never maxed out the company contribution. They stayed at 1% or 2% their whole life. Company was matching up to 3 or 4 maybe up to 5%. And all the while, their retirement, their nest egg, wasn't growing to its full potential because they were missing out on company dollars. So by far, the first thing you should do is go take a look at your 401k plan and making sure and make sure you're contributing the most amount to get the most free money from the company. If you'd like an analysis, a free analysis of your company's 401k plan or you as a participant in the 401k plan and need help selecting your investments or want to have a better understanding of your plan, please don't hesitate to email me, jared at redwoodplanning.com. And for free, I'll help you take a look, answer any questions you might have because I understand this is very important and we don't want people to be too intimidated to get involved or to understand their plan and we just want to help everyone reach financial success. So thank you and have a great day.